So I had someone ask me, if manifestation is real and it works, how come you're not in a big palace? And um, <laughs> although it's a good question and I understand it and appreciate it, that's not necessarily how the law of attraction and manifestation works. So let's discuss how it actually does. First, let me make this point. Not everybody wants the same thing. It's ignorant, I believe, and short-sighted to think that everyone wants the same material wealth. If manifestation really worked, we'd all be driving Bentleys and living in our mansion. And what I have found is, is that the more we get in alignment and in attunement with what our soul truly desires, what feels really good in our body, without the masks and the egos and the conditionings and all the story and the patterns and all the bullshit, what the world thinks that we should want, what we think that we think we should want because of what we're constantly seeing and being programmed on Instagram and TikTok and on, you know, in movies. When we really tune in and align, we often find we want much simpler things, like just a really beautiful and happy relationship with our families, maybe the ability to travel and feel more free and light in our body, maybe the joy of doing work that fulfills us and feels good and rewarding, but also is of, of service in some way, whether it's creating an, a new invention that improves people's lives or curing a disease or learning an energy technique, you know, that allows for greater healing and peace in someone's body or sharing a message and a mission that's deeply on your heart, whatever it is, it's unique to you. The more that I've tuned in over time, I went from thinking that I needed this big, amazing house to actually being so happy being nomadic and just traveling the world for almost two years, 20 months, living in different countries and just renting out Airbnbs and being on the beach and exploring different cultures I never thought I would enjoy that as much. I'm a Taurus. I'm all about being home and being grounded and rooted. And what I noticed was I really need some travel and some adventure to balance that out. And it feels really good. And the more that I tune in from that place, the more I feel like, man, I might just want a badass tiny home. <laughs> I follow this Instagram page, Tiny Homes, and they're, they look so cozy and crafty. And they look so unique in design and it's, I, I love them. I'm just like, man, that, that actually looks amazing, minimalist and simple. And I can put it in the middle of nature and just have everything that I need and still have this big life in a little home. I don't know if that's going to be the case right now. I'm, I'm renting a home that's beautiful and I enjoy it. So that's the first thing that I wanted you to hear that not everyone wants the same thing. And the idea that if manifestation really worked out, my experience would be different. No, that's comparison and judgment and complete fucking bullshit. Tune into what is really true for you on a soul level. Because that's actually what you're manifesting. Now, in terms of the steps, Bashar does a great job. And if you don't know who that is, you can look it up. But he does a great job of explaining the steps to manifestation. And there's a lot of teachers who teach this. And I want to simplify it for everybody right now, once and for all. We are electromagnetic frequencies. Electric field created by our brains. Magnetic frequency created by our heart. The earth has a magnetic electromagnetic field. And we have an electromagnetic field. And that field is determined by our consciousness, and our consciousness is determined by our beliefs. The way that we think, feel, talk, act determines or is a result of, as a result of, what our internal system is tuned into, what our beliefs actually are. So our beliefs are based on two things, our soul code, what we're actually came into this world to experience, to create, to you know, to live. And so we have a unique soul design. There's a great psychology book based on the acorn theory called the soul's code. But essentially everyone has this unique soul's code, like your unique thumbprint. In addition to that though, we have a, we have an ego and we have conditioned beliefs and patterns in us. And the more that we can understand our ego and dance with it and use it as a tool to navigate the world and be our fun, unique selves versus it controlling us the more peace that we have because then we live from this deeper soul self and we use the personality, the ego, the Dallas in this case, as just a fun way to play. I know that I'm not this, but I love using this to do my work in the world and to be of service and to have friends and to, you know, have a, you know, business identity. And I know that this is not really who I am at the core, but together, together, it creates my experience. So in the ego sense, in the, the pattern conditioning belief sense, I get to look and explore at what my beliefs are because that'll determine the words I use, the thoughts that are dominant up here, 
the actions that I feel safe taking or that I do or do not take, whether I feel safe or otherwise. So here, my soul and my beliefs at a deep subconscious level. Here, my words, my actions, my thoughts. Here, the result of all of that. So if I shift this, those belief systems, I let go of the conditioning that makes me think the world is a certain way. And I don't let my identity be restricted and say, well, this is who I am. This is the way it is. You don't like it, fuck off. I allow myself to be who I'm really here to be. And I look at my patterns and I say, those, these patterns serve me and they make my life better because they're healthy and it's part of my true design. And these patterns came from the world, the outside world. They came from my parents' fears and beliefs. And these patterns don't serve me and I let those go. And that shifts the way I talk, think, and act. And now that shifts my external reality. So here's the final point that I'll make, and that determines my life. When you have a certain level of consciousness and conditioning and beliefs, and then that shifts, as we just said, your words, actions, emotions, and your ultimate decisions, then your life looks a certain way. And let's say that that radio station is a rock and roll station currently. But for whatever reason, you want to tune more into a country station. So now you start to shift what you think, what you believe on a deep soul level. You connect more with your higher self, your true self. And all of your thoughts and emotions, your dominant thoughts, emotions, words, the language you use, and the actions you choose to take in your life, they begin to change. Your old friends don't feel as good anymore because they want different things. Where you live in the world maybe doesn't really entice you anymore and you're meant to live somewhere else in the world or just travel. And so you start to shift who you hang out with, where you live, maybe how you dress. But ultimately, most importantly, your thoughts, your emotions, your words, your actions. And now all of a sudden you're tuning into a different frequency. All of a sudden you're tuning into WW102FM. And that's the country station in your area. And now that station, everything that resonates, listen to what I just said, on a frequency level, because your radio station is a frequency, your electromagnetic field is a frequency, just like a radio station. So everything that resonates with that radio station, the certain type of music and certain type of artists, right? So who and what you hear. The commercials, right? Agricultural commercials or truck commercials or, the, you know, in all seriousness, the type of commercials that, that are more geared to, to, towards the listener on that type of radio station. And now you start resonating, attracting, manifesting everything in tune with that frequency. Sometimes it'll be specific things like the exact car, but sometimes it won't be the exact person you think it should be or the exact car you think you should drive, but it will still be in frequency and resonance with everything on that station, everything on your current station. So it might not be the exact Range Rover, but it might be an equally beautiful, you know, Audi SUV that's in the same frequency. And that may not be this man or woman, but it might be that man or woman who's actually even in more attunement with your current frequency. And as these things arrive in your life, you'll get to determine, I want more of this and less of that. And then you'll change radio stations again. You'll adjust your frequency. You'll let go of more beliefs, old patterns. Things will change because you'll start to change your language again. And then a different person will show up. And now that's the person. Maybe your forever person. And you'll have fine-tuned your radio station to such a degree that everything you had been thinking you wanted but isn't in alignment will fade away. And everything that's really been on your heart on a deep soul level and in attunement will all of a sudden be there. Maybe that's a one-year journey for you. For some, it might be a two-year journey. For some, it might be a 10-year journey of continually tuning in. But here's what it's not. It's not something you just decide and visualize with your fucking brain, and then it just pops up out of nowhere magically. And it's not something that is a place that you just get to. It's not a final destination. We are constantly attuning our station, like we're paying attention to what we're, what we're resonating in and what's being attracted to us. 
to make adjustments as we move through life. And we're constantly, whether you like what you have or not, constantly manifesting. It's all we're doing. Because everything in your outside world is simply just a result and reflection of your inside world. Everything. And some of it is based on destiny and fate because there's things that are just going to happen in this lifetime. You don't choose your parents. You choose your parents before you come into this life. So your parents are your parents. And you're, you're going to die when you're going to die. End of story. But that's why the paradox is we have both fate and we have choice. Because life is a choose-your-own-adventure book. Certain things are going to happen no matter what in your life. You will not miss what is truly destined for you. But how it looks in between is all based on your free will. So I hope that clears some things up because there's always these questions about, it, does free will really exist? Yes. Does fate and destiny really exist? Yes. Life is filled with paradoxes, and this is what the brain can never fucking comprehend. So stop trying to just live the brain, live life up here. We are more than just our five senses, ladies and gentlemen. And yes, manifestation is real. And you're doing it in every single moment, good, bad, or indifferent. But no, you're not just creating war with your thoughts in the way that we think. Yet, all external war is a creation of the internal wars. So as each individual over time, days, minutes, years, centuries, starts to find that internal peace, and there's less war without and so if you want to manifest something differently, you simply change what station you're tuned into. And the way that you do that is to be constantly looking or feeling into or noticing what your patterns, habits, beliefs, and conditionings are. You can get therapy for this, coaches for this. You can do energetic practices, somatic releases, trauma work, inner child work. It helps to repattern, helps us let go of all of our stories, become more of who we are. Then we change our thoughts, words, actions, and now we resonate at a different frequency. And then what we see in our life changes. We manifest from that place. Peace and love, brothers. Continue to ignite purpose. I hope this was of service. If you have any comments or questions, let me know.